Yeah, this is Billiam Tice. I've talked a lot about Discovery Channel and its sister channel's content a lot. I'm really focused on that weird era of time where a lot of these channels decided to just start making stuff up. It's like there's a little monster guy running around the forests in Indonesia eating people. His name's Homo floresiensis. There's a 60 foot shark into the ocean and Discovery Channel has exclusive access to all this amazing footage of it. And most notoriously, Animal Planet tried to convince everybody that mermaids exist and that the government was trying to hide their existence to prevent you, the hardworking American, from getting a little mermaid tail. But while I was making these videos, one little liar slipped under my radar. That's right, like any mega corporation, Discovery Channel owns a lot more than you may be aware of. The Food Network, Discovery Channel, The Science Channel, Animal Planet, HGTV, The Learning Channel, and of course, The Travel Channel. Why is best? Sunday, April 22nd at 9 on the Travel Channel. Do these things have an off switch? I never really watched the Travel Channel while I still lived with my parents and had access to cable. And looking back on the kind of things they used to air, I don't think I'm missing out on much. So many ghosts. Ghost Adventures, Ghost Hunters, Ghost Brothers. Is that their competitor for Property Brothers? But they still do kind of air traveling shows still. A lot of reruns from things they spent more money on, like Anthony Bourdain content. But despite the few exceptions, and your average travel channel host doesn't have any more charisma than your average travel TikToker. Man, the food, man, I eat food. Don't be fighting your food, dude. So without a lot going on besides ghosts and food, in the fall of 2017, the Travel Channel decided to take a trip to the Fib Factory and get a little loose with the truth. Helltown tells a sensationalized version of the story of Boston Township, Ohio. Hilltown. A town which has garnered a lot of scary rumors and folklore over the years, ever since it was emptied out and abandoned by the US government in 1974. That's an excellent way to make people start a conspiracy theory. You can't blame anybody for creating theories about this town. Hilltown. Ever since, rumors of ghosts, government cover-ups, chemical spills, cult sacrifice, and a larger than normal snake have plagued the town. Hilltown. And adding fuel to the fire, the fucking travel channel, owned by Discovery Communication. Now Warner Bros. Discovery. They're not conglomerating to make a monopoly, they're just good friends. Helltown claims that not only were many of these rumors true, but also that the town was cut off and emptied out by the government in order to contain a powerful monster, the Wendigo. There are a few instances when you get a better look at what attacks the teenagers, and it's no bear. doesn't sound like a bear either. So let's check out Helltown and get real into the conspiracy of it all while we separate the fact from fiction without any drinking. Before we continue, let's discuss today's sponsor, Raycon. Check out these babies, everyday earbuds, true wireless earbuds, but don't be mistaken, just because these puppies cost half as much as other true wireless earbuds doesn't mean that they don't have great battery life. 32 hours of battery life and eight hours of listening time. That's eight hours. That's enough time to listen to one YouTube video essay. Yeah, that's right. Check out these sweet angels with their custom gel tip. You'll suffer from a concussion before these babies come out. Welp, I'm dead, but those Raycons are still in there, and they're still in here, in the afterlife. With my life behind me, I've realized that it makes perfect sense why Raycons have over 48,000 five-star reviews. With reviews like that, you could spend every day of your living existence with them. They should call them everyday earbuds. I came up with that. Don't let Raycon tell you otherwise. After all, you don't want to disrespect the dead. Remember to appreciate the life that you have. I wish I clicked in the link in the description or went to buyraycon.com slash billium to get 15% off of my purchase, but it's too late. Don't make the same mistake. In line with many of the other fake documentaries produced by Discovery Channel, there is some truth to the Helltown myth. It's based on a lot of the urban legends surrounding Boston, Ohio, which just sounds fake. Boston, Ohio. It's actually Boston Township, Ohio. That sounds a little bit more plausible. All right, right at the beginning of this cinematic experience, we're, we're showing some really fake footage. These teenagers are live streaming, but there's no chat. Where's the chat roasting them and telling them that, you know, they're friends when they're not? 
not friends with them. I'm your friend. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then after some vandalism, they spray paint a pentagram on this this rock. It's just a regular rock though. They get attacked by a monster. Um, this is a really bad recommendation from the Travel Channel. I don't think anybody should be traveling here. This belongs on the Stay Away Channel. Okay, scratch everything I just said. Forget about the mermaids, the megalodon, the little guy in the jungle. This is convincing footage. Let's do a little research. As the documentary points out in 1974, Gerald Ford did exercise eminent domain in order to seize the entire township from the people to expand the national park system. But then they didn't build a national park. The US does regularly exercise its ability to seize public and private property for projects that are deemed to be the greater good. Now, usually the greater good is defined by a corporation, the highest bidder, but this time it was deemed to be a public park. Some of this land is already bought, but they're still in the process. The Lands Acquisitions Office is still in the process of purchasing all of the land. But then they just left the whole town to decay. Despite the financial compensation, there was backlash from the community. I bet those people feel even worse knowing that the National Park was never built. They were kicked out of their homes just to watch their homes sit there, be unoccupied. And this is where the truth supposedly ends by all reputable sources, but that footage, it's convincing. It's so disturbing. There's no way I can buy the official report that it was just an animal or the explanation offered by the mainstream media that there was no attack at all and these were all credited actors. So after the teens are killed, we get our first mind blowing twist in Helltown. Remember the mermaid documentary? Remember this guy, Dr. Paul Robertson, the guy who found the mermaid and told us all about their scientific evolution? Well, it turns out he has a lot to say about Helltown as well. Wait, here he is, here he comes. These kids are doing the oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love to think that like, this is all in the same cinematic universe. Like this guy, mm -hmm. this red haired guy, he's a grifter okay. who is the same guy mm -hmm. who said, hey, I'm this professor. Let me tell you about this crazy hell town. Mm -hmm. But then a few months ago, he went to another station and goes, I just found mermaids. <laughs> Let me tell you about it. He's oh just God. going around like grifting yeah. these Finding like different shit. TV oh networks. Oh yeah, he's a con yes, man. Yeah. Incredible continuity, but don't let this grifter fool you. Dr. Paul Robertson, Professor Paul Wyndham of Cuyahoga Community College. So anyways, Dr. Paul, Professor Paul here, he explains that the Wendigo is in this area where Boston Township used to be and that the native communities who used to live there, they decided to leave it alone but when the settlers came in they were like hey let's sacrifice goats to it and then people but are they still active today well the writers of this special who came up with the concept of the cult seem to think so it never existed in the first place the windigo is part of algonquin folklore it's a supernatural spirit that practices cannibalism it looks like a nice. Yeah. Ooh, that's a 10 pointer book right there. <laughs> that's gonna feed the babies for at least a week. <laughs> he's gonna like move real he's quick. He's not even trying to like be. Oh. Oh, he's the buff bug. It's yeah. the devil. Beast stars. You gotta put beast stars. <laughs> and then we have our emotional core of Helltown. Everett McMahon, an ex military operative who was sent into Helltown by the military to discover the evil monster who lied within. After all these years, after fighting his demons, he's now fighting dementia, but he's still able to draw the shapes they ask him to draw for now. He's traumatized. All his friends were killed by the monster in the cult, but we're able to get this story out of him before he loses all grip on reality. And then finally, we have my favorite side story of this special, the YouTubers, Terry Greenbaum and Tort. Greetings and salutations. Yeah. This is Terry. Fuck no. yeah. Sal we love a salutation. He's a paranormal investigator and he's picking up on all the conspiracies about Helltown, including Everett McMahon's story. He recovers the footage. So the story of the special is told through interviews with these actors and the recovered footage from McMahon's expedition into the bad zone of Helltown, which is told with actors. And then we get reenactments of those events as well. Also shot with actors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's probably I imagine they just go out to these sets with two sets of actors and film these scenes back to back. I can't imagine how else they would do it. They had the same latex. 
dummies. Yeah, they like, did. They did. They, <laughs> the little squishy. Yeah. <laughs> so the story that unfolds reveals that the cult, the WW cult, is still active within Helltown. Oh, Terry and Tori, you gotta get out of there. I find it interesting that this location in particular was used for this scary special. I mean, the name Helltown is more interesting than any of the actual folklore that came out of Boston Township, Ohio. Going online, I was able to find quite a bit of content published both online and in traditional sources before the Helltown special aired on Travel Channel. And the Wendigo storyline was something that they didn't make up, but just applied it to Helltown for some reason. It had never been associated with the town before. They should have used the Melon Head, which is a very Ohio-centric cryptid. I love this website, ghostsofohio.org. It's a non-profit website which tries to catalog and investigate paranormal activity in Ohio. The site's founder, James Willis, published an investigation into the town in the Cleveland Plain Dealer in 2001, now archived on the website. It's really just a lot of boring rumors that have been heightened by the eerie remnants of the town now abandoned. Like there's a haunted school bus rumored to be owned by a serial killer, but it's just, you know, scrapyard metal. There's apparently satanic imagery everywhere, but really it's just misinterpreted Gothic architecture. But Willis was even more daring to investigate some of the more haunting rumors of the town, such as that of a ghost that'll appear in the Boston Township Cemetery, sit on a bench and look. It terrifies people. <laughs> but after interviewing local resident Claire Road, Willis discovered an inconsistency in the story. I've lived here my whole life and I've never seen a ghost or a bench in that cemetery. There's so little going on in this town that there's rumors of a bench in the cemetery. <laughs> but what is the Travel Channel doing recommending such a terrifying place to me? Ghost bench. Mutants are also rumored to roam the town due to carcinogenic chemicals being dumped in the town from 1948 to 1980. This is probably the most legitimate reason why the National Park was never built, because there was toxic chemical, like, contamination everywhere. Hydrogen sulfide or something. But there's a little bit more truth to the mutant story even before the chemicals started being spilled. This myth is older than the name of Helltown itself. The Peninsula Python, a particular paranormal snake is rumored to be a greater length than that of a typically larger than average python. Particularly large, in fact, is supposedly slithered silently out of a carnival tent in the middle of the night in 1945. Does it exist? Maybe. It did. But it'd be dead now. But anything is possible in Helltown. However, in Ghost of Ohio's 2001 investigation, we did discover that our favorite resident, Claire Road, did grow up hearing about the myth of the Peninsula Python. So it may actually have more legitimacy than many of the rumors that actually leave the community, such as the rumor of a bench in the cemetery or a Wendigo. It would make sense that a lot of speculation of Boston Township would leave the community, considering a lot of travel publications have talked about it. Weird Ohio and Atlas of Obscura mention it, and Virgin Airlines wrote an article about it. Hopefully not while anyone was flying the plane. That'd be the real scare. So it makes sense that a lot of people who had never even been here, including me, would gain interest in this place. Well, a lot of Discovery's foray into sensationalistic, less than true, and just straight up fictional content proved to be a short-term success for them, proving to be big rating smash hits the night they aired, it really tarnished the reputation of the company holistically across all all their channels. However, in 2015, a new chief executive was signed to be in charge of Discovery Communication and promised no more fake stuff. The twist to this promise was it was hyper-specific to Discovery Channel because that same year, Animal Planet released Cannibal in the Jungle, and then a few years later, Helltown. But I think by the time they started doing this stuff, nobody was being fooled by it. People fell for the mermaids, people fell for Megalodon, but nobody was really falling for Helltown. Try to fool me once, Discovery, shame on you. 
Try to fool me twice, Discovery. Shame on you. Try to fool me three times, Discovery. I'm convinced. Let's continue looking at Helltown. So Snopes does a pretty good job of laying out all of the things that this special just straight up made up. Like these two kids that apparently were eaten by the Wendigo and went missing are just stock footage kids. And the compound that the FBI shot up is actually a farm in the Czech Republic. Of course, Snopes does claim that the Wendigo attacks also aren't real. So maybe we should be a little skeptical about it. I've seen this footage. That is a demon lurking behind that tree. But the ultimate plot twist comes with how the YouTuber's plot line progresses. So he discovers in the National Park survey that this rock wasn't there. The same rock that they spray painted a little pentagram on the teenagers that were killed by the Wendigo. So he and Tort go back to the rock and discover it's fake. Yeah, what the fuck? <gasps> That was made of incredible. <laughs> what? That oh, was okay. well, paper mache. Hurry, dig. You're like. Nicholas Cage. A gust of wind could have blown this over. And my favorite part is a lot of people who were watching this special, this was it for them. This is what convinced them that this was fake, not the demon the paper mache rock. So they go down under the rock and discover a secret bunker with all of this old technology in a vault where the government apparently kept the Wendigo. And I'm, this is all just stranger things. Locals don't refer to the area as Boston, Ohio. Today, it's known by another name. The quirky little characters, the small town government cover-up and paranormal creatures, the synthesizer music, and it came out after Stranger Things, of course. So anyways, our boy, the YouTubers, they go back with the uh, Travel Channel film crew to see the underground bunker and discover it's been, you know, boarded up. They they poured concrete over it. It's it's concrete, concrete, baby. Con concrete. Concrete. You can't get under there anymore. <laughs> Tort put everything he had into this. He's devastated. They do give each other a little hey, kiss, though. That, ah! I to kiss you. <laughs> that might have gone poorly. Okay. That's some good, we didn't get closure for the mystery, but we got some good emotional closure between Terry and Tort. Uh, so we see the rest of the military exhibition footage and the guy is captured by the cult and there's a shootout and then the Wendigo gets him. But our guy gets away, Everett McMahon. Luckily, he's still drawing shapes correctly. That's a pentagram. He's drawing a pentagram, Everett McMahon. He's done, we've lost him. But luckily we've heard his story. So I think by now, nobody was wanting to even give this stuff attention anymore. There was so much published on the Mermaid documentary and the Megalodon documentary after it aired, but literally not a single person besides Snopes cared to talk about Helltown after it aired and GameSpot. The only place I could find anybody reacting to this was on Facebook where they reposted a trailer for this in 2019, claiming it to be a new special. So now that Travel Channel has its horror movie, I really am hoping to see some horror movie content from like HGTV and the Food Network and the Science Channel. But you know, I think the scariest thing they could have done was conglomerate with Warner Brothers and fire however many people will be fired from that. <laughs> <laughs> see ya.